Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose I1, I2, I3, and so on and so forth is a nested sequence of closed bounded intervals. Then, there exists a real number x, such that x is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. So as you can imagine, maybe our closed bounded interval I1 is the interval from 0 to 1. Well then, I2 is a closed bounded interval contained in I1. Maybe it's something like this. I3 is going to be a closed bounded interval contained in I2. I4 is going to be contained in I3. And so on and so forth. As you can imagine, this sequence will go on forever. But it turns out, there exists a real number that is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. And that is precisely what this theorem is saying. And we're going to prove it. Now, in proving this theorem, we're going to use the following preliminary result. Suppose A and B are non-empty subsets of real numbers. If A is less than or equal to B for all A in A and all B in B, then the supremum of A and the infimum of B exist. And the supremum of A is less than or equal to the infimum of B. Now, another thing, since this sequence is nested, this means if we give ourselves any two positive integers, P and Q, well then, IP is going to be somewhere over here, and IQ is going to be somewhere over here, as you can imagine. And so, IP will be a subset of IQ. Okay, so now, let's get into proving this theorem. Now, for each positive integer n, we're going to denote the smallest element of IN as AN, and the largest element of IN as BN. So this is the representation we're going to use for each of our closed bounded intervals. And we're going to denote the set capital A by the set consisting of A1, A2, A3, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we'll denote the set capital B by the set consisting of B1, B2, B3, and so on and so forth. Now, as you can imagine, since our sequence is nested, well, we're going to have something like a1, b1, a2, b2, a3, b3, a4, b4, and so on and so forth. So we expect a and b to satisfy this property. We expect a to be less than or equal to b for all a in a and all b in b. And so we're going to prove that. Since we're trying to prove a statement about every element in A and every element in B, we're going to give ourselves an arbitrary element in A and an arbitrary element in B. Now our goal from here is to show that A is less than or equal to B. Now since A is an element of A, this means that A is equal to AI for some positive integer I. Similarly, since B is an element of B, this means that B is equal to bj for some positive integer j. From here, we're going to split this up into two cases. Either i is greater than or equal to j, or j is greater than or equal to i. In either case, we're going to show that a is less than or equal to b. Let's start with the case that i is greater than or equal to j. Well, we can apply this second fact. If we take p to be i and q to be j, well, since i is greater than or equal to j, it follows that i i is a subset of i j. Now, of course, a i belongs to the closed interval i i, so a i must belong to the closed interval i j. 
And since AI belongs to the closed interval IJ, well, let's remind ourselves, IJ is the closed interval whose lowest value is AJ and whose largest value is BJ. So AJ is less than or equal to AI, which is less than or equal to BJ. So in particular, AI is less than or equal to BJ. But AI is really equal to A and BJ is really equal to B. So A is less than or equal to B. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So this completes the case where I is greater than or equal to J. Now let's move on to the case where J is greater than or equal to I. Well, in this case, if we take P to be J and Q to be I, well, since J is greater than or equal to I, it follows that IJ is a subset of II. Now, of course, BJ is an element of IJ, so it follows that BJ is an element of II. What does it mean for BJ to be an element of II? Well, let's remind ourselves, II is the interval whose lowest value is AI and whose largest value is BI. So to say that BJ is an element of II means that AI is less than or equal to BJ, which is less than or equal to BI. So in particular, we had that AI is less than or equal to BJ. And again, since AI is equal to A and BJ is equal to B, this means that A is less than or equal to B. So we've shown in either case, we have that A is less than or equal to B. So putting this together now, we gave ourselves an arbitrary element A in A and an arbitrary element B in B. From there, we prove that A is less than or equal to B. Since these two guys were arbitrary, this means we have shown that A is less than or equal to B for all A in A and all B in B. So, by this first fact, we can conclude that the supremum of A and the infimum of B exist, and we have that the supremum of A is less than or equal to the infimum of B. Now, it turns out, you could show that the supremum of A is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. You could also show that the infimum of B is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. It's up to you, right? That was good. Well, let's focus on showing that the supremum of A is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. And to show that, what we're really trying to show is that for all positive integers n, the supremum of A is an element of I n. So, since we're trying to prove a statement about every positive integer, we'll give ourselves an arbitrary positive integer. I'll call it n. The whole goal from here is to show that the supremum of A is an element of I n. Well, since the supremum of A is an upper bound of A, this means that the supremum of A is greater than or equal to every element of A. So in particular, the supremum of A must be greater than or equal to A n. Similarly, since the infimum of B is a lower bound of B, this means that the infimum of B is less than or equal to every element of B. So in particular, the infimum of B must be less than or equal to Bn. And now, putting this together, we see that An is less than or equal to the supremum of A, which is less than or equal to the infimum of B, which is less than or equal to Bn. So, An is less than or equal to the supreme of A, is less than or equal to Bn. And that's precisely what it means for the supreme of A to be an element of In. So what we see here is, given any positive integer n, we have that the supreme of A is an element of In. And therefore, the supremum of A is an element of every single one of these closed bounded intervals. So we've proven precisely this statement, right? We'll just take X to be the supremum of A. Well then, the supremum of A is an element of IN for all positive integers N. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.